I would like to introduce our first speaker, Lucas Violgini. Lucas is a PhD student at EMBL EBI um, and the University of Cambridge. He's uh, fascinated by how new methods and algorithms for sequencing technologies help us understand nature's past and present and is motivated to find out how these tools can be used to positively impact planetary health. Thank you. Thank you very much. So my showcase today will be on our method for dynamic adaptive sampling. So as the title suggests, we're adding a dynamic aspect to the oh, by now already very well established uh, process of adaptive sampling. And we do this by taking the data from the sequencing machine and feeding it back into the decision-making process. And more specifically, we do this with a model that keeps track of the already observed data. And then from that derives uh, scores about the uncertainty that we have at each individual site of a genome. And with those scores, that allows us to um, calculate the benefits that we expect from uh, any sequencing read in the genome at any position at that specific point in time. And with this, what that allows us to do is to use adaptive sampling to fill in the gaps or specifically target variants that we would like to sequence further. And we applied this uh, technology to a mixture of microbial um, uh, species that are logarithmically distributed in their abundance. And what we observed in these um, experiments is that the proportion of fragments that we sequence from the different species changes over time according to our expectations from these abundances. So we start progressively rejecting reads from the more abundant species and then focus instead on the less abundant ones. And we quantify this, um, uh, for example, by measuring the mean coverage across the genome. Um, and here we can see that we trade off basically the coverage from the more abundant species to get more data from the less abundant ones. Or we can also measure this by the coverage evenness, so by how homogeneous the coverage is distributed across these genomes. And then uh, in the next step, we want to go even further, and we want to introduce adaptive sampling without the need of um, specifying an input reference genome. And we do this by incorporating a model not for a single reference genome, but actually for a collection of sequences. And then at the same time, combine this with um, an assembly-like process where we find basically the overlaps between the sequencing reads and grow contiguous sequences while we perform the sequencing, and then apply a method to redistribute the sequencing based on these contiguous sequences. And then again, we apply this to the same experiment uh, or to the same uh, sample, and we see the uh, same thing happening where we progressively start to reject reads from the more abundant species and then instead sample from the less abundant ones. And on the bottom here, you can see that um, the more, most abundant species is depleted, that's the one on the bottom, and then the rest of the species are enriched by uh, up to twofold in our preliminary experiments. And then when we construct mags out of these uh, species, at the end of our experiment, we can see that not only do we capture more of the genomes in our mags, so that's the plots on the left-hand side, but also that these mags are more contiguous in the um, genomes that we assemble, which is shown here as the area under the NX curve. That's it from my side. Thanks so much for your, uh, for your attention during your lunch break, and thanks to our collaborators. Thank you very much, Lucas.